Okay, let's go ahead and get started again. It's time. Uh, the so-called F problems in your text are what your author calls fundamental problems. I'm not really sure why he separated them out, unless perhaps they're supposed to be easier, but they don't really look any easier to me. Anyway, um, determine the force. It's on page 286. Determine the force in members D, C, H, I, and J, I of the trust. State if the members are in tension or compression. All right, so they've given us a section S, S, and T, T. It looks like if they want D, C, well, S, S, and T, T go, both go through D, C. H, I, uh, T, T, and S, S both go through that. But J, I, uh, let's see, J, I, looks like we'd have to use section K, uh, T, T to work with that one. Make sense? So let me sketch the system first of all. Um, support down and ground. Of course, I'm going to need a calculator help here, guys, because, like I told you, I haven't worked this one out yet. Got another roller. And let's see, this is A, this is B. We've got uh, a member that comes up here, up here. My drawing's not very good, let me try again. That. And this is just the beginning of this truss. I'm very glad we don't have to solve for all of the forces in all of the members, because this would take quite a while. Let's see. We finally made it up to where it sort of branches out. There are several pins in here. In there. I think that's it. Have I finally got it? I think so. There's D. There's J. There's H. G. F and E. Now there is a 1,600 pound load. This looks kind of like something that, you know, like an electrical line. So a truss for an electrical line, maybe a couple of them. And the geometry is given in the figure, so I won't bother copying that down. But what they want to know is the force in DC. So let me put question marks by the various members we're interested in. Uh, HI. And then finally, J I. There we go. Okay. So let's start off with a section. And I think the most natural section to select is the one that they labeled TT. Now, I unfortunately, asked for unknown, so I may be sorry I did this. We'll, we'll see. If I were to section it there, what do you think? Um, what do you think I should select as my free body? The upper part or the lower part? Upper. I'd choose the upper part because then I don't have to mess with the reactions. Now the reactions are not too bad. I mean there's just a vertical force at A and B so that wouldn't be terrible. Um, and it may be beneficial actually to calculate the force in the vertical direction here. Uh, but of course there's force in the horizontal so I don't know. Let's just try taking the upper section as a free body and see if we can come up with some of these unknowns. So let's make the free body diagram. And it's important to always, even if you've drawn the entire thing, sketch a free body diagram of the part that you're taking. I don't really care about all the details and pin numbers. All I care about is the external loads or are the external loads. And the loads, this is J, internal that I'm concerned with. Okay? So let's just make sure we know this is point H and this is point D. Okay? So the ones we really care about are here, here, and here. Most of the time a sum of moment equation will eliminate a whole lot of stuff you don't care about and give you what you want immediately. So are there any points you can see where I could sum moments and eliminate all but one unknown? 
I'm not sure I haven't figured it out yet. Let's think about it. Now, one thing that happens when you draw your free body diagram like this is students often begin to be limited to the points they see rather than realizing there are other points off of the free body that are valid for summing moments about and might help you. For example, summing moments about point C eliminates two unknowns as does summing moments about point I. But this may be a system I can solve. I'm not sure. We'll find out here in a minute. Okay. If I sum moments about H or D, I'm going to have three forces in there. And that's going to be not fun. So I'd like to avoid that. I'm going to make this as easy as possible. Now if I sum moments about, let's see, like I said, I or C, I'd have two unknowns. And uh, I suppose we could do that. Or J, right? J? Yeah, if we sum moments about J, I like that because then we've just got two vertical forces. It'll still be two unknowns, but I like that. Let's give it a shot. So if we sum moments about J, counterclockwise and positive, we should get zero. And so the moment arm, yeah, I like that. Good idea because now the moment arm is easy. It's just HJ and JD, which I bet they gave us those dimensions. Yeah, each one is six foot. You see that? So six foot on this side, six foot on this side. So what is the moment of this force? Let's, well, let's give it a name. This is the force in member HI, and this is the force in member DC. So what is the moment arm, in other words, what's the perpendicular distance from this line to point J? Six, six, six feet. So will HI cause a counterclockwise or clockwise rotation about J? Counterclockwise. So is it positive or negative? Positive. So plus 6 HI. How about DC? Negative. Minus 6 Wait. DC. Right? Am I forgetting anything? Or can I set this equal to 0 and be done? You got the, the two external. You got the two externally applied forces also. Ah. What's the moment arm for the 1200 pound force? 15 feet. 6 plus 9. Right? The 15 feet. You guys are perfect. You're in unison. 15 feet multiplied by 1,200 pounds. Now, of course, I'm being sloppy. I should have feet here and pounds here. These are all foot pounds. So I think we'll be okay. What about the 1,600 pound load? Minus, Minus 15 times 1,600. Good. That's the sum. Well, you have that. Yeah. So that's the sum that comes out to zero. Okay. So we have one equation and two unknowns. What else should I do? Do the y. Do the y. I think we could sum forces in the y direction. Yeah, maybe so. Mm -hmm. If you're going to sum forces in the y direction, why wouldn't you have to take into account the whole body? I think we might. I don't, we might not get away with it without it. You're right. Let's find out, though. Let's set up the equation and see what happens. So HI, you can kind of tell, well, you can't tell, I guess, actually. Is there intention? It almost looks like it better be in the opposite direction, but I don't know, maybe these two are pushing up. So we'll just keep what we've got and say minus HI minus DC uh, minus, what is this, JI, we can call it. And this one would be JC. So minus JI, but not all of it. We just need the vertical component. So how would we calculate the vertical component? It's 45 degrees. It's a 45 degree angle, exactly. So let's use cosine or sine of 45 degrees. I don't really care which will be the same. I don't want to think about that. I was afraid. I think I may have made a mistake with my root twos in the last problem. That's why I'm using cosine instead. Of. And then minus JC, same thing, cosine of 45 degrees. All right. So we've got another equation, but now we've got two new unknowns. How about the horizontal sum of forces? It'd just be the J, J, I, J, C. J, I, J, C. In fact, it would be something like negative J, I, sine 45 degrees plus J, C, sine 45 degrees equals zero. Because that's all there is. There are no other forces that are horizontal. So I think we've lucked out this time. Would you not do H? J or JD? Uh, HJ is internal to my system. 
I'm not concerned about any forces and any other members because as far as I'm concerned, the rest of this is just welded together. Okay, it's all one piece. What about the uh, 1,200 pounds and the 600 pounds for the sum of Y? Do you need to put those in as well? Oh, I forgot them, thank you. <laughs> That's a big miss. Minus 1,200, minus 1,600. Thank you, that's better. Okay. But I think what we're going to find from here is that JC and JI are equal and opposite. Don't you think? Mm -hmm. Well, not equal and opposite, but just equal in magnitude. <coughs> uh, we can't say whether <coughs> JC and JI are pointed in the positive or negative directions, though. Now, we don't know if it's tension or compression. All we really know from here is that JI equals JC. Okay. Now that might simplify things just a little bit in the sum of forces in the y direction because look, the only one that we care about is ji. So can we just say minus two ji? What did I use? Cosine. Yep. So now I've used up this equation, but I don't think we're any farther along because now I have two equations, three unknowns. I'd hope that would fix it, but. Are there any other things we can do? For example, some moments about any other point. I don't think there is. I think we're stuck. So we may have to go up through the truss from the bottom and just see what happens. Okay. And what I'm tempted to do is start at the bottom, work my way up, maybe use a joint equation for C or I, and see if that will give me one of these forces, and then go back to my uh, truss. I don't know. We'll see. So if we were to take a free body diagram of the whole thing, we'd have AY and BY. And if you see something I miss, feel free to blurt it out. There's an easier way. So BY, BY, we should be able to calculate the magnitude of these two reactions because what we could do is, for example, some moments about A, so let's do that. So I'm working on a different free body diagram. Be careful when you have multiple free body diagrams. Because you might write down an equation and think, oh, it goes with this free body when it doesn't. The free body diagram that I'm working with right now is this one, which I've, it's the diagram that I've converted to free body by adding in the reactions. So now this sum of moments about point A is for this free body. So I think we had, what, 6 plus 6, so 12 foot times BY. That would be the moment of BY about A. And then we'd have, what, 6 plus, from here to here was 15 foot, so 6 and 15 are 21 feet. So minus 21 times 1,600 pounds. And then on this side, let's see, that would be what was it? It was 6 plus 9, wasn't it? So it's just 9 feet out further? Yes, yeah, just 9 feet further. So that's a positive 9 foot moment arm times... 1,200 pounds, and I think that's it. Everybody agree with that? Any problems? Do you see what I've done? You guys are looking at me kind of blankly. Let me make sure you understand. Basically what I did is I said, there's the moment arm of 12 feet for BY. Here's the moment arm of 21 feet for the 1,600 pound force. And here's the 9 foot moment arm for the 1,200 pound force. Is that okay? The, is the, the force DC or whatever is not going to, is that well affect? Remember that now <coughs> I'm looking at this overall structure as my free body, not this. So again, all the forces in the members are internal and won't make any difference. Good question. Anything else? I'm probably literally just going to do a summary of what you just said. But That's all right. So that red line is, so you, when you're actually doing some of the moments, that you're actually looking for what's on the opposite of that, what's causing that to happen? Mm -hmm. Okay. I get it. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you for asking. So I think we can get BY from here. So give me a hand with your calculator. BY should be um, 21 times 1,600. Minus 9 times 1,200 divided by 12. I'm going to put square brackets on here so it's a little easier to read. 1,900. 1,900? Anybody second that? Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. So we've got 1,900 pounds 
for the force at B, and getting the force at A is easy, we just sell forces in the Y direction. So let's see, 1,900, that's a 300 difference. That means we only got to support, what, 900 pounds on this side? Because uh, 12 and 16 are 28. 9 and 19 are also 28. So, so we've got the reactions. I'm not sure this is going to help us, but maybe it will. Um, I feel like I'm missing something here. I feel like there's something simple. Well, I guess let's continue through and see if we can calculate. Uh, oh, what about a what about a different section? Yeah, you use section SS. Yeah, what about section SS? They did suggest another section that would eliminate. Let's see what would happen in that case. Let's pause on this for just a minute. I guess we don't need this anymore. We've, got, we've still got the reactions at the base. But yeah, let's see what happens with section SS instead of TT. Okay. Uh, I don't want to erase that. I'm going to run out of space, but let me, let me draw the free body. And that's not the free body. The free body is that. So we'd have, uh, we always assume tension in all the members. Yeah, that'll help. Because we can sum moments about this point, and these three forces will go through it. We'll get that force directly. Yeah, good idea. Thank you. So let's do that. So let's sum moments about point H. Counterclockwise positive. Let's not forget we've got two external loads. I keep trying to forget those. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, yeah, 1600. So summing moments, uh, let's see, and then one of the forces we care about, DC, is here, and HI is here. We don't actually care about these other two forces, so if I can avoid calculating them, I will. I bother with it if I don't need them. So, um, let's see, negative DC, the one I care about. Right, times its moment arm of 12 feet, and then uh, minus 1600 times its moment arm of what was that 21 feet, plus the 1200 pound load times its moment arm of 9 feet. Uh, should come out to zero if I'm thinking right. Yeah, I think that's everything. So DC from this is equal to. Did so you pull this? Was that 1900? 1900. Where at? I think it should be 1900. I think it's the exact same equation. Oh, it can, comes out to 1900 also. I think so. Should. I don't know. I don't know. I don't remember the numbers from before. Probably. Let me take this to the other side. 1600 times 21 minus 1200 times 9 divided by 12. Is that what we had before? Okay, so you say it comes out to 1900? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so now we know that this is 1900 pounds and it was positive. What does that indicate? Same compression. It's in tension. Remember, we assume tension and we're right because we got a positive number. Mm -hmm. So that works. How can we get HI easily? I'd say, wouldn't you get the same thing as getting like AY? I think so. I think all we do is sum forces in the vertical direction. And if it's 1900 and so is that, then this is going to end up being 900. How and in tension, right? How is it tension? So what you're saying is it feels like the whole thing needs to be in compression. Well, what if these two members are in compression? Right? Couldn't these two be in compression? Well, think about it. Think about it this way. If Actually, yeah, wait a second. How is it in compression? Seems like we should have gotten a negative number. Did I make a mistake in so many moments? I assume it's positive. That's right. Ding. DC times 12. Right. Somebody run these numbers again because, oh, I made a mistake. Look at the mistake I made mathematically. I took this to the other side and I took these to the other side. Should be like that. You see? That was just a math error on my part. One point off on the test. 
So you're right. I should have gotten a compression load of 19, let's just write it as 1,900 pounds, and note that this is in compression. And then this would be 900 pounds in compression as well, I believe, right? Because if we sum forces in the vertical direction, if this is in compression, that one will be in compression also. Okay, I agree with you. But I think that these members might either be zero force members or in tension. So now we should be able to go back to this free body diagram and work with it because now we know HI. HI is simply 900 pounds, but it's compression. Notice I assume tension, so I've got, got to plug in negative 900 for HI, and for DC, plug in negative 1900. Okay? Now, what this tells me is that this equation will help me decide whether or not we're thinking straight, right? Are we crazy or what? It comes out, so this comes out to zero, right? How do you dictate uh, HI already? Because we used a different free body diagram to find it. Right. So, since it's the, the force in the member, just like in this free body, I've just used a better free body to solve for it. Then, in fact, maybe I could have some moments. No, I did some moments about that. Anyway, you know, because HI and DC are the same loads in members, then this should be true. And we can check it. We can verify. Does this come out to zero? Perfect. Okay. So now that we know HI and DC, now we can solve for JI, and we'll finally finish this thing off. Let me get rid of this line, because I need just a little bit of space. I guess I could just move the line down. In order to calculate JI. So if I move this to the other side, it would be JI times 2 cosine 45 degrees equals everything else on the right-hand side. So minus HI, but HI is negative 900, and DC is negative 1900. So I'd have negative of negative 900 is positive 900, right? Because I'm leaving these on the same side of the equation. Negative of negative 1900 is 1900. And then these two would remain on the same side of the equation with HI and DC, because it's this term I pulled to the other side. So minus 1,200 minus 1,600. And then all we really have to do is divide all of this by 2 cosine 45 degrees. And it's not on that side anymore. Okay? So it's zero. Zero. So it has to be zero, zero. because those are 900. It's 2,800 minus 2,800 divided by 2 cosine 45. Okay, fine. So it's zero. Mm -hmm. So then it's not tension or compression. Right. So what we just discovered is that these are zero force members. That makes sense because it's only going straight up in there, right? Yeah, yeah, that does make sense. Okay. Any questions, comments? If if there's zero force members, then why even have them? What happens if you don't have them? If you them. have a X force coming in, let's say like wind, let's dig up. Mm -hmm. Now you've got this is no longer called a structure. This is called a mechanism. It's a four-bar yeah, mechanism, yeah, yeah. and it does this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But it'll only do that if it's subjected to X forces. Or if there's a slight tremor in the ground, and yeah. it just happens to be over. Well, like for the bit. diagrams, <laughs> for the free body diagrams sake, it makes no difference. Right. right. Then it's right. called dynamics. Then it's called dynamics. That's right. <laughs> yeah, so but in um, the real world, you better have those zero force members. Well, if you want a structure, yeah. but if that's not what you want, if you want a mechanism, then you don't want those supporting members, right? You want the thing to be able to move. So if they do play a part in supporting, then they're technically not always zero force. Members. Right. So there are other loading conditions to consider to determine the amount of force in the members. Notice we're just calculating the force in the members in one loading situation. In fact, as soon as I do this, you can tell me the theoretical load in all of the members. It's exactly zero, isn't it? So if it wasn't a roller, would they would they still be zero force members or not? Because then there would be a if they were rollers, or if it wasn't a roller, yes, it would still be. Um, because there's no X load. Well, not because there's no X. There could be an X preload. Basically, what you know, what you should notice is that there's sort of a copy of this structure here. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. And so. Really, there's nothing up here that can cause horizontal force, at least if, if we take this away, right? So any forces internal here are going to make this move yeah. a little bit to relax those forces, right? 
So because these are pin joints, there's not going to be anything transmitted horizontally in them. Okay. Good questions. Anything else? What if there is a force applied horizontally at C or I? At C or I, then we need to recompute to figure out what's going to happen. Because then these members come into play to resist those forces. And I think one's going to end up being in tension, the other one in compression. So would HF and FD, would they both be zero also? HF and HD. H no, no, HF and FD. Ah, FD. I don't know. Because it's equal to, or it's symmetrical to a JI and JC. Yeah, but think about it. We've got different magnitudes of loads here and here. So I'm not sure that those would be zero. I think what you're saying is, does all the load go through here? I don't think so. Because I think there's going to be some tension in these upper cords. Yeah. Because if they weren't, then it would just rotate. And so, I don't know. I'd, I'd have to do the math. I, I don't know. My intuition is not that strong. And quite frankly, I don't trust my intuition like I used to. I found it was wrong so many times in so many classes. <laughs> I began to think, well, I'm just going to use the equations and principles they've taught me because I think that they are more correct than what I used to think. Anything else?